So it's exactly what we're seeing. I mean, there's a lot of people out buying, a lot of interest, a lot of eyes on the market. Rates are steady. Like I'd say they're as steady as they've been for the last little while. Like, you know, bond rates as of this morning have come down again slightly from where they were last week. But I mean, they're not they're not really moving much. We did see some lenders raise rates. We talked about that last week. We saw some lenders raise rates about 10, 10 points, 10 basis points last week. So, you know, what was 469 is now 479, for example, but everything else is pretty much the same. I don't really see too much change happening and people have kind of accepted the rates. I know we said this maybe six months ago, but yeah, buyers have now accepted, okay, rates are in the high fours and that's just what it is. And we still need to buy a house. You're listening to the Ottawa Real Estate Podcast with your hosts, Paul Stevenson, David Warren, and Greg Campbell. Let's see what's going on in the world of real estate today. Hello, welcome back to the Ottawa Real Estate Podcast. I'm Paul Stevenson, a mortgage agent, level two, and I'm joined by my co-hosts, as always, David Warren, mortgage agent, level two, and co-owner at Referral Mortgages, and Greg Campbell, realtor extraordinaire and partner at the Campbell Merrick Group. We are here every week to bring you the latest and greatest in real estate, stats, Ottawa. <laughs> How are you doing? Guys, I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty tired today. I'm. It was a long night, Greg. I know we chatted. Dave, I think we chatted. Hmm. No one's sleeping these days. Everyone's <laughs> everyone's <laughs> sleeping, uh, sleeping hard. But we're here. We made it. The intro's awful. Full of no caffeine. One no one cares. No one cares. <laughs> My first coffee of the day. No one, I arrived two minutes no ago at the cares. office. <laughs> we showed up. I'm here. No one cares. Mm. Oh, yeah. The market, oh. eh? The market. The market is something. It's It's been interesting. We're now July 9th. We are over halfway through the year. And as we talked about last week, it's kind of day to day. Uh, you were talking before we came on air, Greg, about days on or not sorry not days on market the months of inventory uh -huh. seems to have shifted now to a buyer's market unofficially but officially based on you know statistics statistics yeah. we've got three, the numbers, uh, you know, signs four months of supply basically yeah which is you know basically considered a buyer's market at that point i think it's still pretty balanced overall but we're heading towards some changes it seems if it keeps going the way it is you know, more listings. We we are at the, hold on a second. Where's total, total listings? Oh my God, not new listings. Homes for sale. We have 3,826 homes for sale. Well, we had in June, you know, which was the highest since 2018. I think I may have mentioned that in the last show or no, it was new listings we were talking about. So yeah, so we're basically where we were in 2018. I think we're probably heading towards 2017 numbers which would be about a thousand more in the month of July with all the new listings coming out, but we'll see. I'm not sure. Not just new listings coming out, but homes staying on market. The ones that are just kind of pricing themselves away from the buyers in hopes that things will change. And of course the usual, the hot ones are selling priced well, selling well. Mm -hmm. And then, but there's tons that are just sitting and having to slowly drop and drop. Um, they get somebody to pull the trigger. Yeah, I think when we were peak sales period in like 2022, 2021, wasn't there, I think we went over these numbers. I think there was less than a thousand homes on the market in Ottawa, wasn't there? Like, wasn't it something yeah. crazy yeah. scarce? Uh, 800 or something? Let me just look here. So in, let's go same time. So June, 2020, there were 1400 listings, basically mm -hmm. 1400 homes on the market. So that's, you know, and now we're basically at 4,000. So that's it's quite a bit. And then in, that was 2020. Let's just go here to 2021. In 2021, June, there was 1,737 on the market. So up slightly. But yeah, the lowest was June 2020. Okay. And and probably nothing staying. Like average no. days on market was probably mm -hmm. June of 2021 and 2022 was <laughs> under, under yeah, a day, week. Days on market at the same time in 2020 was, give me a second here, seven seven days <laughs> and and what's our average now 35 average right now is well it's actually it's 18 
Okay. I find that that's the median. That's the median. Let's switch to average and see what we get here. Average is 20. You know, I like to work by averages for whatever reason. 27 days on market average, June, 2024. Mm -hmm. Average days on market, June, 2020 was 18. So basically the same as the median, seven to 18, 18 to 27, whatever. So yeah, it's kind of surprising rates, still. Rates at that of, point uh, were still like 2%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel, back then it definitely didn't feel like things were sitting for, for an average of 18 days. Like they were. No, but I mean, but, that's some of the ones that, you know, got sold and they were listed, let's say on a Monday, holding offers until the following Monday, mm -hmm. you know? Or, or a two week period or whatever, or maybe yeah. some more conditional, whatever, but uh, yeah. So I feel like over the last two, three weeks though, that the market has been steady. Like there are a lot of people buying, a lot of people shopping. There's just a lot of options, I think, but there's still a lot of people out there. It's not like, you know, like there's five buyers looking at 4,000 homes. Like there's a lot of people uh -huh. out yeah, there shopping are. for homes. And a lot of those people that have their homes listed are also shopping for homes. So, you know, you have at least 4,000 buyers plus all the people that are in the market looking for those first homes. So still very active. You know, we're not by any means saying that the market is slower. It just seems to be shifting now. It's There's not. so much supply that it's now yes. a buyer. You know, the, the ball is in the hands of the buyer. Everybody is taking their time. I've got more buyers coming around now. Like I'm building a, a, a bit of a, the, probably the biggest buyer pool I've had in a long time, just because of that reason yeah. where no, like literally sometimes I just can't get it, people even out there like, no, we're good. We'll just wait. We're watching. Thanks for sending the listings. Thanks for keeping us updated. We're good. Mm -hmm. We'll be ready soon. And, and that just keeps building. Right. So, I mean, for me in the end, I guess it's going to be a good thing because I'll have, you know, I can build up, build up my, my business until mm -hmm. people, start buying. But the one thing we have a house on in Hintonburg on a busy street and oh, it's on Parkdale and we've had over 40 showings on it, I would say. And it's, it was renovated, but it's got a lack of kind of a small shared driveway parking seems to be the comment, but of course it's on Parkdale right at, right at the highway. So it's been, it's been a difficult sale, but I mean, the fact that we've had about 40 showings we had showings when it was priced higher. We dropped it. We've had the same amount of showings when it was dropped, but we still get the same comments and we can't move it. So the fact that there's that many, and we've maybe had like three, three second showings on that, like that's a lot of people over six weeks mm -hmm. to come and look at a property for sale. Right. And to your point, Paul, like that's, there's people looking, they're just yeah. waiting for that many people not to, not to get a sale. It's like, you know, we may have to further reduce it. It'll sell eventually, but it's it's tough for certain certain products. Obviously, it's a really nice is, property you know. too. Like it's, it's nice. Like, right? I mean, they did they did a reno. It was great work, and I think just the timing was just. I mean, because you can't predict it, right? As you know, you can't predict the market. Yes. You can't play that game. I there was the stats came out obviously for for June, and believe it or not, guys, I read an article this morning about what? home sales in Canada. Yes, I did. <laughs> and amidst everything else this morning, uh, I was able to read this article. So While driving say, before your first coffee. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it says the Bank of Canada's rate cut last month likely contributed to the uptick in resale activity, but experts caution that the market remains sluggish by historical standards. Home sales in Toronto, Vancouver, and Montreal rose from May to June, according to preliminary data from local real estate boards. Uh, this marked the first monthly increase for several months for Vancouver, Montreal, and the first time in five months for Toronto. The Bank of Canada's rate cut last month provided some initial relief for homeowners and home buyers, Chief Market Analyst Jason Mercer said, who's from the Toronto Real Estate Board. In Ottawa, I'll go to the actual Ottawa stats because that's all people probably care about here. Sales in June, 1439, which is a 0.1% increase. Benchmark price for all housing types, 647,700. That was down 0.5% year over year. New listings, 2469, up 4.7%. And active listings, now this is a bit off from yours, Greg, so this might be an older stat, but this was showing 35.85, which was up 45% yeah, year over year. Yeah. It says, Ottawa continues to see steady activity as we head into the summer market, said or President Curtis Fillier. Fillier? Fillier? Right. Unlike recent years, buyers have more room to wait, evaluate, and be selective when searching for the right property at the right price, leading to a slight uptick in the days on market. Sellers are making moves as evidenced by the inventory and listings. So it's exactly what we're seeing. I mean, there's a lot of people out buying, a lot of interest, a lot of eyes on the market. Rates are 
steady. Like I'd say they're as steady as they've been for the last little while. Like, you know, bond rates as of this morning have come down again slightly from where they were last week. But I mean, they're not, they're not really moving much. We did see some lenders raise rates. We talked about that last week. We saw some lenders raise rates about 10, 10 points, 10 basis points last week. So, you know, what was 469 is now 479, for example, but everything else is pretty much the same. I don't really see too much change happening and people have kind of accepted the rates. I know we said this maybe six months ago, but yeah, buyers have now accepted, okay, rates are in the high fours and that's just what it is. And we still need to buy a house. So well, especially you know. the ones that are just coming to market now, right. That don't even, where yeah. it didn't apply to them before. That's interesting. It's interesting though. Like I'm looking at the stats too, from last month from the board and it says 2.5 months at the end of June, 2024, but on the same in our back end MLS system, it does say 3.7. So I'm a little confused about that. Where is the discrepancy? I'm, I want to bring attention to something else that I've just uh, found out on this new data bring chart. Attention. I, on this new data chart that I have, everyone. Get the new data chart that I've just discovered right now live on Torah. <laughs> new data Read chart. Read it this morning. Yeah. Read it. <laughs> reading it now. Yeah. So <laughs> this is in. So for June, this is very interesting. So if you want the exact months on month supply on market, so for um, properties that are seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars or more, it's five point seven months month supply. On properties that are five hundred and eighty thousand to seven hundred and fifty thousand, it's two point eight. For four hundred and twenty thousand to five hundred and eighty thousand, it's two point nine, and for four hundred and twenty thousand or less, it's three months supply. So the big hmm. month, biggest month's supply of homes on market is detached homes, $759,000 or more. Very interesting. And I mean, that's not really that surprising either. You know, the higher, the higher price point, the higher income needs to be for qualifying, you know. But if you're an agent that, but... and you're out there, mm -hmm. you should have that information because that's going to solve, it should help solve some problems. Because if you go into a listing let's say you're up against a few agents and you go in first. I mean, if you go in at any point and you say, you know, I, you know, I appreciate you're seeing other agents. That's great. You should be interviewing, trying to find the best fit. But did anyone let you know that for your price point and your type of property, the average months on market is, or the average month supply is uh, 5.7 months for the city right now at that price point, meaning you're going to be sitting for a lot longer potentially than the other ones. I think that's valuable information to have. It's just about setting expectations. Yeah. 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 Anyways, a little tidbit. Fun fact. Uh, what I else, some, gentlemen? I have some data since I'm in data mode. Data us. Data us. Data us. Data us. Insights, insights. This is pretty detailed. I, I want to go through this in full, though, so people can like tr truly get a proper description now. Since I seem to have found, I seem to be hunter lately, finding things to help benefit the viewers. Hunter gatherer, Greg. Key insights from recent home sales in Orleans. So this is recent home sales in Orleans, residential only. This goes all the way from modular homes, like mobile homes, basically, to, from to towns. Detached, semi-detached. So, and this says it right here. The sales included detached homes. This is the last two weeks. Row, home, row units, semi-detached, bungalows, indicating a diverse housing market catering to various buyer preferences in Orleans. Highest sale price, $1.152 million. Detached two-story home. Lowest sale, $290,000 for a detached modular home. Average sales price, $697,298, reflecting the mid-range affordability of homes in Orleans. Price trends. Many properties sold close to their listing prices while some exceeding them, suggesting strong demand still. The sale price as a percentage of the list price ranged from 93.7% 93 to 103.47%. So clearly some are selling over asking still. Now, depending on where they were listed at, that's, that's what you're seeing. Days on market, properties sold relatively quickly with the shortest days on market being one and the longest being 85 days. Median days on market, 16 days, which is similar to what we were just talking about, indicating a fast-moving market where well-priced homes do not stay, on, stay long on the market. Again, as heard on Torep. Neighborhood insights, areas like Avalon West, Avalon East, Notting Hill, side, Notting Hill, Summerside, 
saw active sales indicating these neighborhoods desirability sales in Fallingbrook, Chapel Hill and Maribel Bradley estates also highlighted their popularity property size and features listings varied in size and amenities appealing to a broad audience from small families to larger households market demand properties often sold for over 98 percent of listing price reflecting a competitive market a few homes sold above their asking prices demonstrating high buyer interest and potentially competitive bidding situations again as heard on torah trends and observations homes are priced competitively with many selling at or above asking price Fast sales, there's a quick turnaround of property sales suggest a strong demand and active buyer market. Neighborhood popularity, neighborhood popularity. Certain neighborhoods are particularly desirable, possibly due to amenities, schools, and community features, obviously. Market dynamics, the Orleans market shows a healthy activity with a variety of homes catering to different buyer needs. Recommendations for, per per <laughs> God. Recommendations for prospective sellers. Price competitively. Given the quick sales and high sales to list price ratios, pricing your home competitively can attract serious buyers quickly. Highlight unique features. Emphasize any unique or desirable feature of your home to stand out in a competitive market. Prepare for a fast sale. Be ready for quick transactions as properties are moving rapidly. Focus on curb appeal. First impressions matter. And enhancing your home's exterior can attract more buyers. There you have it, everybody. I'm done. Toe rep. <laughs> What do you guys think of that? That's that's pretty detailed, and it's kind Very of detailed. indicative of a healthy market when you look at the general outlook here. But you know what yeah, I mean. Like if I I'm think... a if I'm a home buyer, I'm pretty happy right now. Like, I, you know, I don't feel much pressure. Mm -hmm. I have kind of the pick of the litter. Like, it really is. It's actually, believe it or not, it's a good time to buy. No, but mm -hmm. in all seriousness, like if I'm if I'm a first time buyer, I feel like this is kind of the pace you want to be moving at. Right? It's like okay, I got. Mm -hmm. You know 30 to 60 days i can kind of do my research poke around do my inspections like I, i've seen a lot of people actually, to get in, get into actually have conditions <laughs> yeah actually have conditions i've seen a lot of people that have gone into that have conditionally bought homes you know i submit their offer or I submit their file for approval and then we get the file approved and then they do their inspection they're like yeah we're walking away or you know we did this and we're you know we're not comfortable with what happened and walk away that's happened a few times in the last month so people are taking their time which i think is very good are you thinking of buying or selling a residential property? Relationships are at the heart of every real estate transaction. At Geltain Poirier Avocat Lawyers, we love to bring residential buyers, sellers, agents, lenders, mortgage brokers, and the law together to close the deal for you. For an effortless client experience that opens doors, call us at 613-744-4488 or visit our website at geltainpoirierlaw.ca. Let's get to the heart of your deal. Are you trying to grow your mortgage business? Centum has the tools and support to help you take your business to the next level. Get access to everything from free unlimited custom marketing to daily direct pay. Find out what your business can do with Centum. Learn more at joincentum.ca. Uh, something I've been hearing murmurs about. I'm interested to hear if you guys have heard this or what your thoughts are on it. A lot of people are saying, and this is kind of doom and gloomish, but that there's a lot of people waiting to buy, expecting that there's going to be a further drop in prices because of the election coming next year and the likelihood that if a conservative government gets in, that there's going to be a lot of government jobs that are cut. And Ottawa being very heavily government focused could basically, you know, cancel all those jobs and potentially drive home prices even further down with the job loss. Have you heard that? And if so, what are your thoughts on that? And how do you think that's impacting the market with that happening likely in the next 12 months? I don't For think... For sure in the next four years. I think rates... I mean, rates are going to come down before then, which is going to help people mm -hmm. qualify, which is going to drive and stimulate the market. I mean, mm -hmm. Bank Canada has to drop rates. And then obviously leading into an election, they're going to have pressure from the feds, even though they're not supposed to, to drop rates or, or help in other ways. If they're... You know, if there is a new government or you know, then, and, you know, conservatives come in, they're not going to cut 30% immediately. Like it's, it would be basically, they would stop taking on contract, you know, consultants, they would stop taking on like, and there would be a, a slow high, like stopping hiring and then maybe a slow trickle of jobs. But we have such a robust high tech sector and private sector as well, that I think those, a lot of those jobs would transition over to that. But 
I don't, I don't think it's going to be a huge drop. We also had the last time Stephen Harper in government, there was a huge, there, there was a reduction in, in federal employees and home values still continue to rise. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people f are still finding employment elsewhere. Again, like, you know, we still have huge investments in, in the high tech sector and growth there, you know, big, big infrastructure being built out in Canada and Stittsville for, for those companies as well. So I think a lot of those jobs would just parlay over to the, over into the private sector. That's yeah, I don't my think thoughts. it's going to change anything at all. I, I think we're too big as like the city is over, you know, with the size that we're at, I'd say if we were half the size, then it would probably, then it would, there'd be a more yeah, drastic I mean, if it impact. Was based because on we're like diversified. an industry in particular, for sure. Right. It's like, oh, you, your town's powered by the mine. Like everyone works at the mine, the mine shuts yeah. down, everyone's gone. Prices drop, the city's dead. It's not going to happen here. Yeah. I think they, they, they can, those, the those effect. roles can parlay, parlay over to, to other other companies, right? Like whether it be you're in, you're working the government in, in IT, you're going to parlay, you're going to move it over or you're in like HR, you're going to be able to move that over to another private industry. But again, it's going to be a, it would be a slow trickle. And I think it would just be a, a halt in hiring. Mm -hmm. They can't just go and wipe away, you know, tons of jobs. Cause that's obviously going to impact services that regardless, even if there are, you know, 30 and 40% overstaffed, you know, that still would impact services and they can't, you know, they wouldn't be able to have that. They'd have to evaluate things. It would take quite a bit of time for that to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we have seen the employment numbers be kind of propped up recently because, you know, we talked about this, I think probably three, four months ago where there was 60,000 jobs created or so, it was some, I don't remember the exact number, 50,000 jobs created, but it was, you know, 30,000 full-time jobs lost Federal. and then, you know, 80,000 part-time jobs created. So it's kind of like a net right. 50,000 jobs, but all part-time mm -hmm. and it's a headline grabber. A what a surprise. Full-time jobs mm -hmm. gone. What do you think is going to happen at the end of July, Dave? What do you think the Bank Canada's decision is going to be based on the current data that we have? I know there were some new numbers released last week I, as well with regards to the employment and so on. I I think I think they are going to leave it as is. I think that would be too... Like, I think they'll want to evaluate uh, some more. However, the US has two announcements this week. Thursday is their inflation and CPI numbers are coming out uh, in the US. And as well, their producer price index, basically what producers pay for goods, you know, which obviously kind of parlays into what consumer pricing is going to be. So I think with more so the inflation numbers out of the US, because obviously we continue our, our economy continues to be impacted by what they do and and obviously if those numbers come in down or or wherever those are and, and if the fed u.s feds decide to do something that'll kind of drive things but i don't think they can move right away just having just dropped last month it'd be great if they did not just for the mortgage market but for like just consumers in general that are on variable for people up for renewal for businesses all of that but I think it's going to be a hold for another, to the next announcement. Yeah, I think so too. I hope so anyways. I just find it fascinating how many people wait. Like in my business personally, it just seemed like literally you would, we're busy. They announce a rate announcement. We've got four weeks of moderate, moderate to busy. Rates announced. We got mm -hmm. three weeks of busy. It slows down for a minute. Then everyone's anticipating this other rate announcement. And now it's the same thing where it's, you know, um, there's nothing consistent in my business right now, other than conversations. And then there's always an uptick, like two weeks after the, the rate announcement, which doesn't even really affect the people that I'm working with. So it just, it blows my, I, I don't, I don't understand it personally. Maybe it's just an anomaly, but can't just be me seeing that, but that's how it's, how it seems to be trending right now. Every conversation I have, I bring that point up and then the people laugh saying, yeah, I'm actually, that's kind of how I think right now too. And I'm like, yeah, it's like the, the way that the media controls everyone's buying decisions, buying decisions, like has never been seen before. Right. And it's fascinating that people are actually looking at it in that way more than ever. I'd like to talk about what I was mentioning to you guys before the show about Vancouver and that vacant unit tax change that they just yeah. amended. Mm -hmm. Do tell. So I'm, I'm confident this is going to come to Ontario. Like if this is actually 
you know, it's happening in BC from what I, what I understand. Very reputable source, Steve Soretsky. And if that's happening there, it's probably going to come here. So what he was saying is that if you have a vacation home, let's say you live in Vancouver, you have a vacation home in Penticton, Penticton, Kelowna, whatever, in around that area. If you don't want to pay your vacant unit tax, you know, and you only use it a couple times a year, let's say you have a $2 million property just for easy numbers here, and you're paying the 1% vacant unit tax, that's 20000 a year. At the same time, you're kind of like, well, I don't want to leave it vacant. I want to rent it out, but you can't rent short term in most of these communities. So they, there's no Airbnbs, there's no nothing. So, you know, you can put in a tenant. Now the new rules only allow for a tenant to be in there for six months at a minimum. And if you are going to move back in, you also, you now have to in BC give four months notice to a tenant mm -hmm. as opposed to the 60 days that you have here, four months, 120 days notice to get somebody out of your property or, you know, at, at the end of the lease, you have to notify them. And now the thing is, if you have a property where you're doing a six month rental, and you're giving them notice that you're coming back, like you want to use your vacation home for a month in the summer, you can't. Legally, you have to move in for 12 months after that six-month rental term in order to not pay the vacant unit tax. In this in this example, on a $2 million home, that's $20,000 for the year. So it's like, how, you know, what is the province and Canada trying to do here? It's almost like they're pushing people out of owning a secondary property it's mm -hmm. they're they're taking away it could it be generational homes from families who've had cottage for you know over 50 years that they want to pass down to their for family farms to enjoy farm whatever they're literally pushing people out of it for for whatever reason like i don't i don't know what reason because who's gonna like what do you do with that I mean, and if that comes here, then people are going to only own one home. And then what happens with that? Now, when people only own one home and you those other homes can't gains sell, tax. they get the capital gains tax, which is probably going to go up. It's, it's bananas. They're literally taxing the country out of their mistakes. I mean, that's what's, I think that's happening around the world right now in, in a lot of countries, but in Canada, they're taxing us out of their own mistakes, the federal government's errors of misspending and over leveraging thinking that everything's going to be amazing forever by bringing you know millions of immigrants to the country which is you know that's it's great in certain ways but in a lot of ways it's really taken away from from the country as a whole right now it's just made a giant mess it's like it's like everyone thinks that real estate is like the savior of the economy somehow and it's 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 the focal point of all our troubles right now which clearly it's not so anyways, that's a, that, that's probably coming to Ontario. So get ready for that one. Good yeah. Day. I, I wouldn't be as upset about it if the tax that they took was managed effectively and it was actually like servicing Canadians and if you could made our lives it. easier and you could see it exactly. You could but see what's it. most frustrating is that all these things go up and seemingly nothing has changed. Things are actually worse. Things are more expensive. Things are worse. And we've never been taxed more. So, you know, you look at the average income, probably after actual taxes, housing costs, and just mm -hmm. literally insurance, food, gas, and housing, you're, most people are probably sitting at, you know, 60 to 80% of their income mm -hmm. in Canada. So John, John Flynn posted that a condo in Toronto last week was listed for three ninety nine, and uh, he had to call the agent to confirm that what he was seeing was real. It was three ninety nine. It sold for two eighty two, and like they lost everything. And the comment was from the agent they had one showing in I think two months, and then they just they obviously they just took it to get the hell out of there because <laughs> everyone thinks it's going to get worse. That's in Toronto condo market, pretty wild. Wow. No supply issue there, I guess. <laughs> but rental starts are up. Hey. Yeah, you guys saw that graph. I know it was for Toronto, but that graph I sent of mortgage payments versus rent in Toronto. I think it was since like the 90s. Oh, yeah, that was the... Uh, yeah, that guy does some pretty good charts. He works with Daniel Falk, right? Yeah, Our Ben Rabido. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where is that? Can we put that up? I mean, I know it's Toronto, but it's still... It's pretty cool. I can find it quick. I don't know if Stephen will be able to throw that in short... Cool quickly like that, but I can certainly grab it. 
Let's yeah. just talk to it for now. And yeah, we'll talk to it. Rental rental market is very challenging. Excuse me, holy. If you're looking for a for a rental, it's very challenging if you're earning under $100,000 unless you find the right landlord, which in in our case we we did in the last one that Venkat and I put together, it was extremely frustrating for the tenant clients and, and for us, but you know, we made it work. That's what we do. We work until the end and we find the place. But I mean, if you don't have, you have to have everything, everything together before you get out there, guys, like just, you know, if you're looking to rent, please just talk to a realtor and have them help you because I don't know how anyone's finding a place that's not working with a realtor right now because the rules are extremely serious. And fair and fair enough. Like a landlord wants somebody in there that's gonna, you know, make sure that the place stays in good shape, pays the rent on mm -hmm. time, and doesn't, you know, want to suddenly stay there because they're not earning income as a professional. So just be just be aware of that. If you're not earning up to a hundred thousand dollars, you have to just align yourself with the right people to to find the right place. Oh, well, there you go, Stephen the Wizard. Gloom, toe rep, doom and gloom. <laughs> Yeah, sp speaking of the yeah rent rental prices, I think this yeah to your point, Paul, this chart in Toronto is pretty wild. Seeing the is that live right now, Steve? The access so points of of rent versus mortgage payments in Toronto and how they correlate. Yeah, we're watching it right now. So anyone who's listening, timestamp yeah, it. Thirty one minutes. <laughs> Go to YouTube, watch the the chart that we're staring at right now. This next one in twenty twenty is or twenty twenty three or twenty twenty two right here. Look, it's the hockey stick. So crazy. Yeah. So crazy. I'd love to see that for Ottawa, but insane. Like I was talking about this when I bought my yeah. first home, I, I think my payments were literally like a thousand dollars or something a month. And then so good. Yeah, next home was like eighteen hundred. It was like great. And then current home. Up. Yeah, but then <laughs> bigger home, eighteen hundred is still good. Everything's good. Everything's good. <laughs> then you take a ver then you take a variable rate, and uh, and your your payments double. You know, for most people, <laughs> and yeah. that's and that's when it changes. But I think in general, like the price, even just rent, like you're talking about rent, like the idea, like you know, thinking back, let's just say 15 years, renting for twelve hundred dollars a month for a three bedroom is like pretty standard. Like that would be you know on the high end maybe. Now you're looking at you know. Four thousand to five thousand for a single family home to rent, you know, thirty five hundred for a single family home to rent, and and the owner of the home is probably still losing money, like they're still not even cash yeah. flowing. Like it's it's just a wild wild time. You know what's crazy? I, when I was living in Vancouver, when my last place was a two bedroom condo downtown, right at Thurlow and Alberni, and I was paying fourteen hundred a month, and that was in I left there in two thousand and six. Think about that. For and and that price was good for back then. Even the owner, we had a conversation one day and he's like, "Listen, he goes, I know this is already outrageous. He's like, I'm not going to charge you any more money." And he just said, "You know, I don't know what I don't know what else to do. I can't invest anymore in Vancouver." He's like, "I own three properties that I'm renting out and it doesn't make sense for, for me anymore." And this is in 2006. In BC, well, in Vancouver. So, so think about that. That unit now must be like I don't know, four grand. I mean, fourteen hundred. That's what I was gonna say. Fourteen hundred eighteen years ago is a lot of money as well. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it was it was crazy what I was and like I was managing, but in the end, I was like, I'm like, I can't. It was it was ridiculous the amount of money. Like mm -hmm. I I had my my studio, my music studio. I had the condo, and I was just like, this is enough. I gotta. I'm getting. I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah. My kids, my kids really make me feel old now because I'm always like, oh, you know, my first job, I was making 40,000 and was, was killing it, you know, and they're like, mm -hmm. oh, you're so old. You know, it just seems like mm -hmm. unfathomable. Well, it seems These like our parents, right? 35, you know, 40,000. I used to go down to the cinema. Yeah, with a penny. A nickel, <laughs> nickel for film. Yeah. Of course, well, of course, my, of course, my parents speak in that accent. Yeah. <laughs> well, we were talking before coming on air. You're, you know, Paul, your son's working at Tim Hortons. One of my first jobs was Tim Hortons. And I was, I think I started at three ninety five or four twenty five an hour. And he's, he's starting at probably $18 an hour. 
<laughs> yeah, I think I think it's different for people under 18. I think there's like a, a lower minimum wage, but I, th I still think it's in the like $15, $16 range. Um, but yeah, very interesting. I, I, we'll have to get into the stats next week because there was, I, I wanted to, I don't have the stats, so I don't want to talk about it in detail because I'll misspeak. But the stats about increased percentages in retail jobs, and I think for fast food workers, I think the the hiring was up. I think it was like forty one hundred percent or something in the last four years, and just kind of wild to see the influx of of employment data. But I'll I have all that. It had basically a breakdown of numbers by industry. And it was very interesting. So I'll, I'll get that for next week, just so everyone can actually see it. But it's some of the numbers are pretty, pretty eye opening. And there's reasons. There's reasons for everything. Okay. Obviously, there's always reasons. Very eye opening show on that. Yeah, very, on, very eye opening. Eye, eye opening. Open eyes. We're opening eyes yeah. here every week. Jump into some mood boosts. <clears throat> yes. yes. Open my mind now with some comedy, Paul. I will. I have three today. I might throw in a fourth, but I'll go three see how they hit yeah number one i hate it when people say age is only a number age is clearly a word mm. that was horrible i didn't read that mm. one before i said it it was very you should probably go with four because i was awful yeah. we'll just omit that Delete number that. two <laughs> don't even give me their their rim tide or the heck it's called their <laughs> rim shot uh, rim tide rim shot Riptide. I was like a riptide. And number two, I ordered I a could chicken. Go so far with that and leave it alone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> PG show here. I ordered a chicken and an egg online. I'll let you know. Yes. Number three. This one's pretty good. Of all the inventions over the last one hundred years, the dry erase board has been the most remarkable. Mm. Yes, I like that one. Clever. Mm. I'll go with that one. And this one, I'll close with this one. This one's pretty good, too. The furniture store keeps calling me to come back. But all I wanted was one night stand. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just wanted a night mm -hmm. stand. You know? It works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone. Uh, for putting up with us. And I do apologize for the intro, guys. I was uh, still waking up. So. <laughs> well, that's okay. Yeah. I Happy to be here, though. Happy to be here. Full day. Uh, I'm going to give a quick shout out to Team Canada, who at this Let's time go. when people are listening is now in the Copa America final, or I will have my foot in my mouth, which is the most likely. We're playing Argentina tonight. <laughs> and go and England for anyone listening. Big England game, 3 p.m. Yeah. Thanks everyone for tuning Let's in. Go. go check us out on our socials. Do that. YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, whatever. Check yeah, it out. We got some exclusive content on there. Really appreciate your support, and uh, we we'll be back next week. Love you. Thank you, guys. You guys are great. Goodbye. Here's this. Bye now. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe because we'd really like that. 